Before we get started, I'd like to say this is quite a long video as we cover everything to do with this kit, from how to set it up, the file structure, to how to get the most out of the kit when using it with Code Stitch. We have provided timestamps and chapters for this video, so feel free to jump around as you see fit. All sections should make sense on their own. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, my name is Ethan, and I'm in charge of testing and QAing the stitches at Code Stitch, alongside creating and maintaining the Code Stitch starter kits. In this video, we'll be going over the Intermediate Starter Kit, which is a bit of a step up from the vanilla Beginners Starter Kit, which only uses HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Uh, whereas in this one, we've got a couple of new tools that we're introducing uh, that provides a friendly way for you to get started with these tools, even if you never have done before. So one of the tools we'll be using in this Starter Kit is Eleventy, a very easy to use static site generator, which is incredibly fast at building websites, gives you the opportunity to make your code reusable, makes the whole project itself much more scalable and the end websites much more performant. The templating language of choice for this starter kit is Nunjux. Uh, although Eleventy allows you to mix and match a range of other templating languages, we've chosen Nunjux for its easy to read syntax and just general ease of use. And finally, we've also set up a content management system for you in the form of a blog. This is powered by DCAP CMS, formerly known as Netlify CMS, and is very easy to configure, which is all done through one YAML file. And the documentation will be provided in the README if you do want to extend this to anything else which isn't a blog. So those are the technologies that we'll be using in this starter kit. Uh, when you put them together, you have the opportunity to create a really scalable project, uh, while also allowing non-technical clients to make changes in the form of a blog. But that can also be adapted for a menu, a job listing page, maybe a portfolio, the list goes on. Uh, it does come in two versions, SAS and LESS. Uh, both of them are completely identical, it's just whatever method of styling you prefer. Both of them play really nicely with the Code Stitch library, so it's highly recommended you use this kit in conjunction with that. As for some prerequisites, uh, the only sort of hard requirement is, of course, HTML and CSS. Uh, like I said, this provides a good introduction to Nunjux, Eleventy, t and DCAP CMS, although we do recommend at least setting up your IDE uh, to best support Nunjux and maybe have a, a read on Nunjux beforehand to really get the most of this kit. Uh, the rest of the documentation is here, but that's not as hard of a requirement. So let's get started. We've made this super duper simple for you. Uh, we've set up both the SAS and the LESS repositories as a template repository. Uh, so when you go onto the repo, you can just click this Use This Template button, click Create a New Repository, give it a name. So for this, I'll choose Code Stitch Example. If you want, you can set a description, choose whether you want it public or private. Uh, and you don't need to check Include All Branches because it is just main for this one. Uh, then when you click Create Repository from Template, it should just spin up a new repo for you using this template. Uh, all of the history and stuff won't be carried over. It will give you a fresh, new, clean slate to work off. And just like that, you can see that we've made our new repo. So if you want to get started with this, I use the uh, GitHub desktop application. So I can just click code, open with GitHub desktop. If you'd rather do it via the CLI, the option is here as well. Uh, but if you can do it via that, then you, you don't need my help. Uh, I like to use the very pretty looking GUI interface here. Um, we can just press clone and right off the bat it will get dropped into our GitHub. We can then open it up in VS Code and just like that we have the startings of a project here. So when we first start this project, uh, the very first step we need to do is open up a terminal, which is possible by clicking Terminal, New Terminal up here. And I'll full screen and zoom this in so you can see a little better. The first command we'll need to write is npm install which will install the dependencies as outlined in the package JSON here. As you can see, there's not really a lot here. It's just our 11T, uh, our CMS, our preprocessor, and a couple of helper commands here to make sure everything runs smoothly. And then when it's installed, we can just do npm start. Press enter, and a couple of things will happen at the same time. So if you are versed in npm scripts, uh, you can see the first thing we do is we actually delete the public directory here, which means that any stale files which haven't been removed get deleted. Uh, and then we run all of the scripts with watch on them. So we start up Eleventy and start up our development server. 
we start watching SAS, which is complete with auto refresh, and the CMS will be spun up on a proxy server for us as well, which we can navigate just by going to slash admin. So when the scripts have finished running, you should see at the bottom down here on localhost 8080, our website is now being hosted. So if you hold control and click that and then go over to your browser, you should see uh, that we have a website. Uh, this is completely built with stitches. Uh, so there's sort of two ways about going about using this project. Uh, if you wanted to swap out stitches here and there and sort of use this as a, a template to work off, uh, then you can have a website done in literally minutes. Uh, but if you'd rather clear all of the content and start again from fresh, nothing is stopping you from using that as well. Uh, as you can see, our blog is here as well uh, with a couple of test posts that I've been making. Uh, but if we want to make one ourselves, we could just go over to the admin path. And here you can see all of our blog content. So we can just click new blog. We can create a worked example blog post with a sample description that I have authored. And say we want this to appear in the featured sidebar. We could just stick a comma here and put featured. Choose an image. I'll choose the one that we've already been oops, working with. Caption can go here and then body can go here. Of course, this comes in rich text and markdown. Uh, so if your client is a bit more non-technical, then all of the sort of normal controls here, and it gets converted to markdown automatically. You can then hit publish, publish now, go to the blog, as you can see, it is here with the rest of our blog posts in the featured posts in order of when they've been created. The final step in getting this project off the ground is to change the global data. Uh, so if we take a look at the footer down here, you can see that there's a, a telephone number. Uh, if you look in the bottom right there, you see there's a mail to that's been set up uh, and all the information in the head of the website here has all been more or less set up for us. Uh, and this is all done automatically on a per page basis. Uh, the only thing you need to do to make this work for your project is to go back into your IDE, go to the source, data, client.json file here, uh, and fill this out for your client. So that includes the business name, the email, uh, the phone number, which is accepted by the uh, tell href tags, and also a formatted version for display on the front end and then the address and domain here as well you can also include a map link so when you click the address that'll take you through to a google maps uh, and then say if we wanted to change the address we'll say uh, to a new address line hit save and then go back uh, we can see that this is updated in the footer across all pages for us completely automatically and this will also work for all of the information here in the head, mainly the domain, uh, the extra bits here. This is all added on a per page basis and we'll touch on that when we go over the front matter. Uh, so when you fill out the client JSON data file, the project is fully up and running. Uh, you are now ready to customize this website as you see fit. So now that I've shown you what the project looks like on the front end and what the admin panel that your clients can interact with looks like, I think it's time to show you how the project is structured and laid out within your development environment. So if we start off at the root level, uh, as you can see, there's node modules, public and source, the three top level directories. Uh, the first two you don't need to worry about. So node modules is just all of your dependencies. As you can see, this is where Elevity lives. Uh, and public is where all the files that have been ran through 11T, your less or SAS preprocessor. Uh, and this is all of the built files that are ready to be deployed. It's only really needed by Netlify when we come to host it. So we don't need to worry about this either. The source directory, this is our working directory. So all the changes we make in here will be ran through our, 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 our build processes, spat out into public, and then that's where it's served on the internet. Uh, so we've already went through the data directory. Uh, when you first boot the project up, it is just client.json, uh, but you can make more. So if you have other sort of pieces of related data that you want to keep in one place, you can keep it all here. And then this is accessible via uh, our nunjucks. So if we look in footer.html, you see we've got the two curly braces here. Well, what's inside here, it says client address line one. Because we've just specified client, the first place that 11T will look for is the underscore data directory. 
and it will find this client object here, go to address, line one, and that's where this gets rendered here. So if you wanted to create just a data.json, for example, uh, you can then come in here and you can use the same syntax and do data.subdata, and then whatever data.subdata is will get rendered here. Um, so like I say, if you have a bunch of data that's grouped together and you want to make it easily changeable, you can put it in here. We've just included client.json so you can have a quick way to start the project and have everything working super duper quickly for you. So the next folder I'd like to walk over is the includes folder. And as you can see, it's split into components and layouts. Layouts are your page wide structures, whereas components are your smaller, more reusable uh, well, components, uh, your bits of HTML that you're going to use across multiple places, uh, where if you change it in one place here, it will get changed across the whole of the website. Uh, but we'll start off in layouts. Uh, so the most important one is base.html. Uh, and using our Nunjux injection syntax here, we are drawing data from all over the place to make this dynamic on a per page basis. It's all been done for you. You don't need to worry. I will quickly run over it for you now, though. Uh, so at the top, there's the standard meta tags, which all websites should include. Uh, and this uses the domain as we set up in client.json here to set up your canonical in turn with the page.url, uh, which takes the page objects generated when we are working with the template, gets the URL and sticks it on the end. So that's your canonical tags. Uh, next is your OGs, uh, your open graphs, which will show up when you share the, share the website on social media. Uh, this is using bits of data defined in the front matter. Uh, so we'll touch on this a bit more. Uh, I'll skip over it for now, but this will all make sense a bit later as to how it exactly works. Fav icons and preloads are here. They're fairly self-explanatory. Uh, feel free to change these if you do change the logo. Um, same for the fonts here as well. Preload image, uh, that relates to the front matter again. Um, so we'll touch on that a bit later. Any site-wide style sheets and scripts can be found here. Uh, and there's also some nunjux blo blocks for the head and the body. Again, we'll be touching on that when we come to pages. Uh, the kind of thing worth noting here is how the title is rendered. Uh, so we've implemented some best practices on how you should structure your titles for your home page and your about page. It's all been set up for you. If we're on the home page, uh, then we'll be using a more descriptive title. So if this was for a house painting contractor, we'll be saying house painting contractors on the home page. But then for each page, you'll be saying what that page is. And then when it renders in Google, um, it will show up a little bit nicer. Um, and that's sort of how that works here. Down here, we've got some accessibility things. Uh, so we've got our skip link here, which takes us to hashtag main, which is also rendered in base.html. Uh, so you never have to remember about including a main. These two bits will work in pair with each other and will all be done for you. Uh, and that's base.html post.html this is what our blog articles are rendered with uh, we'll be touching on this when we go over the cms section and lastly we have components uh, so the cta the call to action at the bottom featured post footer header that's all stored here as well anything reusable you can make a component in here uh, and use that in any of your templates uh, provides a single source of truth change it in one place it will get changed everywhere so moving on to the next folder, we have assets, which is fairly self-explanatory. Anything that's not data or HTML code would go in here. Uh, slash or fav icons, your fonts, images with different uh, folders for your blog and your portfolio. Uh, your JavaScript would go in here too. And your styles, be it either SAS or less, would both go in here. And any SVGs that you may have also belong in assets too. Uh, for the styles, we kind of follow our own little uh, methodology in this starter kit. So each page has their own page-specific styles. So that'll be your blog, uh, about, and contact. Uh, your critical styles are for any styles that are above your fold. So typically your, your heroes, uh, your services. That'll be um, a services section on the services page that'll be above the fold. So that belongs in here and so on. Your dark mode's in here as well, so you can easily swap out for a different dark mode using Code Stitch if you want. Just remove this and paste in your new one. Local, that's the page specific styles for the home page. Same for reviews and projects. And lastly, roots, this is where your uh, sort of core website colors, your core styles, your reset, your header, navigation, and footer, that all belongs in here as well. Uh, and these are all loaded uh, when they should. So the more important ones above the fold, like your uh, your dark, 
and your critical. They'll all be loaded first uh, with all of the other ones deferred until after so you can get them page speed bonuses. And the last folder in the source directory is content. Uh, so all of your blog markdown files, including the ones that we made earlier, they all live in here. And all of your pages are in here too. Uh, and as we can see, this will work with the base.html uh, to render these. We've also left a template in here because we know it could be a little bit difficult to get started if you're not too familiar with the syntax. It's all labeled up for you. Uh, so you can just copy and paste this into a new HTML file and it will start up for you pretty much. Uh, just fill in all of the code where it says so uh, and the rest will, will do itself. Uh, if we're going back up, still within the source directory, there is a redirects, a robots and a sitemap file. Uh, I would recommend saving these till the very end of your project. Uh, then you can fill these out either with the readme as guidance or we have some resources on the code stitch website for you um, and you can fill these out to get all of the seo bonuses um, there's also another file here as well index.html this is the standard place to keep it so this lives outside of the pages this is just your home page much like you would see in any other project if we come back out of the source directory we've got the 11 config file here uh, you shouldn't actually need to go in here uh, I will roughly explain what's going on here. Uh, so we're importing the 11 navigation plugin so we can dynamically render our navigation based on the front matter, uh, which we're just about to go into after. Um, by default, 11 only allows HTML files through into public. So by adding these pass-through copies and specifying uh, the directory we want to pass through into public, they will get carried through. Uh, and there's also a filter to help format the date on the blog posts. By default, it uses a JavaScript date, which looks terrible. Uh, so this bit of code here essentially just adds a, a filter to 11 uh, and we can change the date to something a bit more readable. Uh, we've also specified here where our source, public, includes and data directories are. And we're saying that we're using Nunjux. Uh, so any file that's a HTML template will be treated as a Nunjux file and that prevents errors. Uh, we have got a git ignore here to keep the repo nice and clean. Uh, and there's also a netlify.toml file here. So if you're not familiar with these, this is essentially just a config file for Netlify. So when we deploy it, it will look through here and it will already know when we deploy that the published directory is in public uh, and the command to run to rebuild is npm run build. We'll also install the, uh, the Lighthouse plugin as well so you can see your page speed scores in a convenient place. And there's some other details here about how we should handle our assets and how they should be built and processed in the build phase. So next, I'm going to go over how pages work, how the syntax is structured to give these cool features that I've been going on about so much. Uh, so like I said, all pages live in content pages. Uh, we'll be looking at the about page for this, uh, which looks like this when it's fully rendered. What you'll first notice is this up here. Uh, so this block up here is called the front matter. And all it is, is some page specific data, uh, which can get carried over either within the page or into the base.html, the parent template. Uh, and that's what powers the, uh, the dynamic head that we've got going on here. As you can see, description, that will be pulled from here uh, and all the others and so on. Now, the reason why base.html is being used is because we're using Nunjux extends here. Uh, and we're looking into, so because of what we have in 11tjs here, uh, we've specified the includes uh, directory here. So that will be inferred from that. Then we go into layouts, base.html, uh, and then all of this data will be then put into this template here. Uh, so title, about, as you can see, it will be using this one here because the page URL is not slash. It will be about, as defined in the permalink. Uh, and then that results in about code stitch web designs being used in the title up here. Uh, the preload image. So at the very top, you see we've got this uh, hero image here. Uh, so if we preload that and we specify the uh, the path here, uh, then we'll get one of these preload tags uh, being generated, which gives you some nice performance gains. Uh, description and title. They go. Uh, description goes here. Title goes in the open graph display. Uh, and then we've already discussed about down here as well. Uh, so the next big thing to talk about will be how these blocks work. Uh, so much like how just a static HTML page would have a head and a body, we've mirrored that in the starter kit here, but used it in a nunjug sort of way. So 
of course, there's going to be cases where you're going to want some page specific style sheets or some page specific scripts that you would want to go in the head. Uh, you want them to go in the right place. So they're not just lingering around in the body. Uh, so if you include it in the block head here, uh, then they'll get dropped in right here just after the script tags. Uh, the same goes for the body. It will be wrapped in this main tag. So when we look at the source code here, as you can see, all of our HTML, as it is in the, uh, the page file, gets rendered here complete with our comments and everything uh, and that's kind of how this works uh, as you notice there is also an 11t navigation object here as well and we're going to go into that now because there's some pretty cool stuff we can do with that so now talking about the header so the header is included on all of our pages uh, and within the header we have our navigation we have our dark mode toggle our home page uh, logo link um, and that's included on all pages because uh, all pages draw from base html and base HTML has this include components header here. And if we go into that, as you can see, it's one of our uh, navigation, sorry, our header stitches, um, but it's been tweaked slightly. So if you have a look in the CSUL wrapper, within that, we've got some pretty scary looking logic here. Uh, and essentially what this is doing is this is drawing from our page front matter. So if we take the about page, for example. So within 11T navigation, we have this key. And this key is what the navigation link will be rendered as when we load up the project here. It gets ordered as per the order number here. So because there's 200 and the home page is 100, it will go up in ascending order like this. Uh, we have left out all of this from contact though, because we wanted contact us to be rendered in a bit of a special way. Uh, so because we don't have that 11 navigation, that won't be included in the, in the navigation. Uh, and that data, like I said, gets used in this for loop here. So we go through all of the navigation pages, uh, which we do by getting the 11T navigation collection. Um, we're essentially just rendering, rendering them one by one. Uh, and there's also some special logic here for if a dropdown is involved, uh, which we'll get into right now. Uh, so the main thing that you're probably wondering is that, you know, this is code stitch. We want this to work very well with code stitch, but this isn't included in any of our stitches. Uh, however, this has been made as a stitch within itself almost. Uh, and if we collapse the UL wrapper, we can essentially just take this out and plop this in another stitch. Uh, so what I had over here was this top bar drop down here, which looks very different to the one that we've got at the moment. Uh, and if we wanted to include this into our project, we can simply go over to get code. We'd go over to HTML and we'd copy that. And for now, I'm just going to collapse this header. I'm just going to drop the new header below. First thing we want to do, of course, is uncomment the dark mode because we are using dark mode with this project. Uh, and like I said, we can just replace this CSUL wrapper here with our original one, which contains all of our nunchucks logic. So if we take this out, and we'll also include the comments as well, we go down to the CSUL wrapper here, and we drop this in. Then all of a sudden, our logic for uh, rendering the pages has been brought over into the new stitch so we can take this one out uh, I think I might show the wrong one here but you can see right here there we go it's all there within the new CSUL wrapper and of course we don't want to forget the styles as well so we can go to CSS we're using SAS with dark mode copy that to our clickboard and if we collapse all of these uh, I could do that by holding control and then doing KO uh, sorry selecting everything holding control KO doing KJ opens everything, K0, that is, uh, collapses it all. Uh, if we find our three navigations, uh, I believe it's three. Yep, so from here up to here, we want to replace. Paste it in, collapse it so we can get rid of our root. And if we just press save on that and then go over to our uh, project here, you can see that it's all been ported over completely completely fine uh, all of our pages are being rendered the same way we haven't got to do that ourselves our dark mode is still working our contact us isn't working because we need to go back and change the link down here to slash contact as you can see that is working now and i also mentioned a drop down as well so if we wanted to set a drop down up uh well for a start let's pick a page for us to make a drop down with let's say we wanted to put the projects page under about us that kind of makes sense so if we go into project 
and then under 11th navigation we go parent and then we use the key as it is in the about us page we can paste that here press save and all automatically you can see that we now have project as a drop down and this is all included in the logic uh, so that is all you need to do you just need to specify a parent uh, and it will automatically come out from the, uh, the top level navigation if you will into this drop down and it all works for you so while on the topic of scalability and reusability uh, let's talk about how the components in this project work uh, so where components are typically found in javascript libraries like react angular view uh, we have brought them to this Eleventy project using our template languages and Eleventy. Uh, we get all the benefits of components uh, without the scripts that weigh it down, uh, which really is quite nice. Uh, and the way that this is done is by making a HTML file in components. So as you can see, we've got this super simple CTA here. This appears in our uh, all of our pages, most of our pages at least at the bottom. This get it done with us today, inviting our users to get an estimate. Um, and yeah, it doesn't look like anything you haven't seen before. Uh, this is just a, a code stitch, uh, and this doesn't have any kind of nunchucks or anything you know, scary looking in there. Um, so because of that, because there's no dynamicness, if you will, uh, we can just use this very simple include syntax here. Uh, and all we're saying is put this here. Uh, and there's nothing more to it. So you can put whatever reusable piece of code, like I say, we've got the footer, the header, the featured post here. You can spice it up with a bit of nunjux templating, if you will. Um, and it will draw from the global data, the front matter, uh, maybe the post data. When we go on to CMS, this one will be explained. Um, and it renders the it renders the, uh, the components using all of that. Uh, now, if you would like to reuse the same HTML, but maybe... Uh, change the content within it, but not use data and maybe define it within the page. Uh, there is a little thing that I'd like to show you on how we can approach that. So as a working example, let's go back over to Code Stitch. Let's go to our side by side and let's pick out a very simple side by side. Let's pick this one of the new ones, SPS Reverse. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes to this to make it reusable. Um, so where you would normally copy and paste your code stitches over and over again, uh, perhaps you want to save on the styling file a little bit. Uh, you want to reuse some of the, uh, the HTML code. You want to have it so you can change it in one place and it, it changes everywhere else. That's possible with a few small tweaks. So if we go to HTML and then click copy to, cl copy to clipboard, excuse me. Uh, and then we'll just say within components for now, perhaps you can make your own folder for these, but we're going to make what's called a nunjux macro. Uh, so if I just go sbs.html, uh, and the way you define a nunjux macro is, well, if you've used the recommended article at the start to set up your IDE, you could just type macro, hit tab, and it will come up for you. Uh, but this is the syntax you can type out. Uh, so we're essentially defining a macro giving it a name, so we'll choose SBS to match the file name and keep it all consistent. And within that, we're going to put our stitch code here. Now, of course, we're also going to want to get the styles for this. So I will keep all of my styles in the SAS folder here. Uh, we'll keep all of our component styles in one. We'll just say components.scss, just for a simpler explanation. SAS dark mode. We can just drop that in here. And now as it stands, we have mostly what you would do with any other stitch. Uh, but we're going to make some changes to this. So if we open this up side by side, uh, best practice would say that you don't want to use an ID uh, more than once. Uh, so if we're going to be repeating this, we don't want to use the same SBSR870 ID over and over again. So instead, we can change this to a class. And if we go through and we select a class within the uh, SAS file, hold control and tap D, uh, we can select all instances where this class is defined and then just change the hashtag for a full stop. And now that's selecting the class and not the ID. The next thing we want to do is change all of these pieces of text uh, to make it a bit more dynamic. We could do the same for the image as well. Uh, and that would be fairly simple to do. Um, you can just follow along and apply what I'm going to do to the topper, title, and text to the image. Um, we define this in the arguments. So we want topper. 
If we type title here, it's going to show up in purple because this is being used in the page front matter. It's a very common thing anyway, title, as we wouldn't want to use that uh, for the sake of overwrites and conflicts. So for this, we'll just do header. And if we do text one and text two, uh, that is all the data that we need to pass into this uh, for this stitch to render. Uh, the best way to think of this would be like a JavaScript function. Uh, so where you'd have the function and then the uh, arguments. Uh, for these arguments, we're essentially just passing HTML data, which we can then render using our Nunjux injection syntax like this. So the top will go here. The title, which we're called header, will go here. Uh, text one would go here. Text two would go here. And now we have made this super reusable. So we've got our, our class instead of an ID, and we've now got our data, uh, which we can uh, adjust and it will render where we define it. So I'm going to use this in the contact.html. And the first thing you would need to do is first import this. Uh, so much like you would with modular JavaScript, you need to import the components from the components folder. Uh, and the syntax for that would be the curly braces with the percentage sign again. And then we need to go from, and we go in components slash sbs.html. Then we want to import sbs. Uh, and just for the sake of simplicity, the import as kind of thing, uh, the file name and the macro are all using sbs, which makes it nice and simple. Because of the way we're doing style, style sheets here, we're going to want to import the new component styles here. Uh, which through the power of SAS will automatically be rendered in our CSS directory here. And then we're free to use the macro as we want. Uh, so maybe below the landing page, but above the contact form, we wanted to have this macro. So because we're rendering content, we're using the two curly braces here. Uh, the macro is called SBS. And then for our arguments here, we can just pass our information here. So maybe the topper can just be called topper text here. Uh, then we separate it with commas. And then we can say for a header, uh, get in touch today. Uh, and to prevent this from getting super long, I'm not going to give like lorem text or whatever. I am literally going to go text paragraph one and then just copy that. Whoops. Again, text paragraph two. If you wanted to perhaps put all of this into your data file and render it here, you could do that. If you want to just have it all on one line, that is also possible as well. But if we save that, go back to our project on the contact us page, as you can see, it's all been rendered and we're now reusing our stitch. You could extend this to do the button CTA text, the CTA link, the possibilities are quite literally endless. Uh, and if we wanted to repeat that, but maybe we say a new different topper, uh, then that's going to get rendered again. And everything else is the exact same, but because we've changed the top text, that's getting rendered differently here as well. And then if we wanted to make some changes to this and say remove the button, that gets removed from both of them as well. So it makes it super clean, super easy to edit and makes it very easy for future you to come back and make edits. You only have one place to do it in. So before we get on with deployment, the last thing I want to show you is the content management system. Uh, Conveniently, I've left this folder to last. Uh, if you go into the source directory and then within the admin folder, uh, you can see two files, a configuration YAML file and a very simple index HTML with a couple of scripts that whenever you visit the admin path, as you can see, we get this that I have shown you previously. Now, most of the magic will happen in the config YAML file. Uh, and you really can do a lot here. This is all outlined in the DCAP CMS documentation. I highly recommend that you read over that if you would like to make some changes. If you're happy with just a blog or maybe just changing these to instead of a blog be like posts or something, then you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, very simply though, we're just saying here that we're uh, what backend we're using. Um, so we're using Git Gateway and we're going off the master branch. Uh, this should be changed to main by the time you are on uh, the starter kit, though, as master isn't used, it's main uh, for this project. Uh, a couple of bit of extra fields here, mainly just defining where our media is stored, uh, how you should save it, uh, how it should be deployed, um, sorry, how the media should be deployed when it's being built. And there's also a logo here. So when this is live, 
uh, this logo will be shown on the front panel before you log in and it just gives it a nice sort of clean touch. And then your collection collections are defined here. Uh, so a name for data access, a label for what your client sees, uh, where all the content is stored, whether we should be allowed to create new entries within this collection, how it should be saved. Uh, so if you just put slug here, it will just use the title as defined here. And then all of our um, entry fields, if you will, uh, that's all here as well. That's all defined for you. Uh, and that's what makes it all show up like this. Uh, like I said, a very high level overview here. Uh, but if you would like to learn more and maybe extend this to multiple collections or different collections, uh, as I said, it's all found in the DCAP CMS documentation. Uh, and then the way that this is rendered is all of the blogs are listed on the blog listing page. Uh, and we're using the tags, which is post. So within the admin config, you can see tags. By default, every blog post will have post on it. Uh, and then that allows us to go into our 11 collections, pull out all of the ones with post, uh, and then we loop through them and we show them all here. Uh, and then we're using our filter that I described right at the very start in in the config for 11 t um, Yeah, that's been used here to make the date a bit more readable. Uh, all the other data literally just comes as it's described in the config. So post.data author, that is specified here in the config. So a little bit of back and forth, um, but essentially everything here is accessible within post.data. That is used in the blog listing page and also the blog template file, which is in includes in layouts. An individual blog post will be controlled here. Uh, and it's the same sort of principle, title, author. Uh, it's just that because we're not iterating through them, um, it will draw from the closest piece of available data. Um, there's a whole bit on the data cascade in the 11T documentation that explains how this all works. Uh, but long story short, in here, you can just use image, image all as it's defined in the config, and it will all be rendered. All of the data will be held in content blog in the form of markdown files. If I open this up side by side, very similar to how the pages were made. We've got some front matter here, uh, and that's how that works. So image, image, image alt, image alt, and then all the content is put in here as per the markdown. Uh, and yeah, that's how it all works. Finally, there is a bit of configuration that helps sort of bridge the gap between this markdown folders here and the post.html. Uh, and you have the option of defining a JSON file, which has the same name as its parent directory here. Uh, and if these two match, then 11T will look in here for your um, for some extra data. So the layout is being specified here. So layouts post.html. Uh, what tags are being used? Uh, what are the post tags? That's how we're iterating through them all. And then the permalink, which determines how uh, it gets rendered here. Well, we're saying we want to go into the blog directory. We want to take the title. Uh, we want to create an index.html file, and that's how it will get rendered. So then our path will look a little bit like this when we view a blog post. If we just go to one of these ones, uh, yeah, that's how it's defined. Um, of course, you can change this. You could change the permalink, and it will change the file path up here. This is all totally up to you to configure. We've just done a lot of the heavy lifting for you beforehand. So by now you should almost be ready to deploy, providing you've set this up how we've instructed, ran npm install, then npm start, set up your global data and made some changes to the pages and to the CMS. You could even remove the CMS altogether if it's not needed. Uh, you are almost ready to deploy. Uh, now there are some things recommended beforehand that we would suggest you do. Uh, first of all, on the CodeStitch website, we have this lovely resources page. Uh, which goes over some of the uh, things we recommend to get to your website as best as it can be. Uh, you've got some different accessibility tools to check your um, to check your accessibility guidelines. Uh, you can go through our page speed guide to get a uh, full 100 page speed scores, validate your HTML, compression images, the list goes on. Uh, one thing I would recommend doing is locally hosting your Google fonts. We have a help for that here. And checking your links for 404s and stuff is also worth doing as well. Uh, that can all be found here. Uh, there are also some additional resources on README here for the three pages that I alluded to earlier on, your redirects, robots, and sitemap. And we have generators for each of those here for you uh, on the README under source files and folders. So you can get those 
copy and paste the contents into here. And then once you've done all that, you really should be ready. So when you've made all your changes and done all your checks, you should now be ready to deploy. Uh, we recommend using Netlify for deployment and hosting as it works very well with the starter kit. It also has a very generous free package, which should do you until you get your freelancing all set up. Uh, and it's very simple to deploy uh, thanks to the Netlify Tomal file that we were referring to earlier. Uh, so if you go over to Add New Site and then Import Existing Project, you can then connect Netlify to your Git provider, uh, which should be GitHub if you're using the starter kit. Now that we've done that, we can just use the code stitch example that we've been working with, uh, and it will automatically draw from the uh, Netlify Tomal file that we've uh, been using. Uh, so it automatically knows the build command and the publish directory, what branch to deploy on. So we can literally just press the buttons and go through. And as you can see, it should right now be deploying onto a test domain for us without having to make any changes. So I'll just let this deploy and build uh, and I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so this has been built and deployed. And if we click on the domain here, as you can see, this looks awfully like the starter kit. Uh, I didn't carry through all the changes we made. So this is just the base version of the starter kit here. Uh, as you can see, all of the links are working. Uh, all of our blog content will be showing, although our CMS panel will not be working just yet. We'll set that up in a moment. Uh, all of our data is being merged through uh, and everything in general just looks like it's working quite nicely. Uh, so we are now going to set up the CMS, uh, more specifically the authentication for this CMS. Uh, so where normally you might have to set up your own custom server and handle all the authentication stuff yourself uh, with your own backend language and tech stack and whatnot. Instead, we're just going to host this on Netlify and let Netlify Identity do it all for us. Uh, we can get this set up just by going over to site settings. If we scroll down to identity, uh, what you should see when you first start this up is just a small little box here with a, a blue button, looks a bit like this, that says enable identity. If you click that, give it a couple of minutes, this should spin up. Um, there are also a couple of other things you need to do that I've already gone ahead and done beforehand. Uh, the first would be changing the registration to invite only. Uh, and you can just click edit and then click um, change from open to invite only here and then you could save that uh, the next would be to add external providers so again I've already added Google uh, there is also GitHub, GitLab and Bitbucket uh, but the chance of your client having any of these accounts unless they're a developer themselves is very slim uh, so the option for Google will be here just click that, get it set up it will be here for you uh, and then the last one would be to enable Git Gateway. Uh, again, that's just another simple button you've got to click to make sure it's all on. Um, and it will just work all automatically for you. Uh, I've just done this all beforehand, so I don't leak any of my own personal details. But they're all very simple to set up. It's just clicking buttons and filling out the pop-ups as they appear. Uh, one other thing worth noting, if you're using the uh, Netlify identity for, say, a larger scale project, maybe you are going as far as trying to implement authentication on your own, uh, front end on the front end which will be seen by all users of the site you can actually change the email templates here uh, which is definitely something worth doing if like I say this is going to be user facing end user facing uh, but changing all the email templates and stuff isn't really necessary if you're just going to be inviting a couple of people to the CMS uh, how do you invite people to the CMS well first off you go over to the left tab here and then under integrations you click the identity sub tab and then our Netlify identity integration will be here. You can then click view uh, and as you can see, I've already invited myself here. Um, you can just click invite users and drop a bunch of names, uh, not names, sorry, email addresses here uh, and it will automatically send the email over. Uh, as you can see, I've already done that and got it all set up once again so I don't leak my own email. And just so you know what the email looks like and how it all works, uh, this is what it looks like in my email. Uh, as you can see, it is very, very simple, uh, which is why if this was going to be end user facing, you might want to dress it up a little bit. But we can just click the accept the invite button. Uh, when you do this, it will automatically take you over to your website with this pop over here. Uh, this has all been pre-configured for you within the starter kit. Uh, so it makes for quite a nice little user experience here. Uh, and you could either set up your own password or continue with Google. Uh, I'm just going to put a password in here, a nice simple one. 
click sign up and give it some time it should be completed okay so it did take a little bit of time there but in the end it did take us through to the content management system uh, it's all a fairly seamless process you just click on the invite uh, it takes you through to your website where you can enter a password and then it takes you back here and this is all just on the admin domain here so if you just type slash admin slash like this um, when you're on the website uh, and it will just take you through here and it should remember you and it should sign you in all fairly seamless and put together uh, and as you can see all the blog content is showing here exactly how it does on the website itself uh, we can even try adding a, a blog post ourselves and sort of see what happens behind the scenes uh, so if we create a brand new blog post uh, this one comes from the live website author me and so we want this one featured uh, i have just picked a url here from pexels uh, which should hopefully load this could be absolutely ginormous and probably going to ruin our page speed scores but this isn't a real website so we'll be fine uh, and then the alt text goes here and go hello world again and let's make this a h2 uh, and that's all ready to go we can just hit publish publish now it will say that the entry has been saved and if we go back to our panel here on netlify go to site overview and scroll down you can see that a new blog post has been pushed as a markdown file to our github repository uh, that then sends a webhook back over to netlify netlify kicks in a new rebuild uh, then the whole site gets rebuilt again uh, but it will use that new uh, markdown file that we've used and look, it's going away it's doing our thing it's working with the lighthouse plugin uh, it should normally take about a minute or so uh, not normally much longer than that 11t is known for being one of the quickest static site generators there is and by the time i finish this little speech look it's all here and it's all done uh, a couple of issues here with seo and stuff but that will be ironed out before this gets deployed uh, and if we just go back and we refresh as you can see we've got our brand new blog post from the live website with our different background and if we click continue reading uh, it takes our, our h2 styles it applies them here and we now have the post here complete under the featured post section uh, so i think that just about wraps up the starter kit how-to guide uh, taking you from beginning the project to deploying it uh, i hope that this has been useful and i hope this really does speed up your project uh, development process uh, and yeah until next time I will see you soon